His name shall be called Wonderful Counselor, Everlasting One, Prince of Peace, and the government of the world will be upon her shoulders. And you're meant to be the Wonderful One. You're meant to be that counseling presence to others. We're here to bear witness to the truth, and one of the greatest teachings for doing that, to be the light in the world, to do what Jesus did, not just talk about it, but to embody it, to bring forth the birth of the Christ presence. Not as something happened 2,000 years ago to one person, we have this little party and give each other a bunch of stuff we really don't need, but to celebrate the awareness of love's presence born in us today. That's the second coming of the Christ. It's what the world's been waiting for. What, what he did for us, we are meant now to do for each other. That, that's why we're here, to be that presence in the world, to embody it, not, not just think about it as somebody else's gift, but to be the gift ourselves that we unwrap and give our lives to. I, I need my notes for this talk, because because I forget when I'm talking about a lot of time. You know that, don't you? <laughs> <laughs> and and this, um, this, this actually comes out of um, teaching what you always most need to learn. Have you noticed that? That no matter what's going on, particularly as a teacher of this stuff, this is very tricky stuff. Because once you sort of sit down and show up for it and speak it to people, you get to see either where you are or are not living it by the circumstances that then come as a result of it. So I continued with the story of, of compassion. And I had these notes in, in my house on Wednesday when I was going over uh, what I would share on, on Wednesday night. Practices, our practices of prayer and meditation, of, of the daily word, of taking classes with Paula, of doing the Course in Miracle lessons, are, are all designed to help us awaken to the fundamental habit patterns of aversion and clinging that we all carry with us. That Jesus came to teach suffering and the end of suffering, to show us that we were much greater than what was ever appearing in our life. And that when we take a look at those things that we're suffering with inside, we're less likely to need to project it onto others outside. Not that we don't do that, but we're aware of the possibility of making a shift. So slowly, breath by breath, Moment by moment, <laughs> day by day, choice by choice, we take a look at what's going on inside. Not outside, but inside. Inside us. And then something arises spontaneously that is just miraculous. And I love how this came out. It's the vast, radiant, healing, miraculous, fantastic, effervescent nature of our being and everybody else's. Yeah? <laughs> Fall on my knees <laughs> and hear the angels of God praying and bringing forth good news of great joy. For unto us in those moments a Savior is born, a saving ointment massages the cramp muscles of our own being and we're more present for other people on earth. So I'm, I'm babbling on with all of these great truths getting ready for my class. And the phone rings. God calling, ring, ring, ring. And it's an old friend who I have not spoken to in a long time. It's been about a year since I spoke with him. And we're on the, the speakerphone and we're sharing, you know, grandkids and our kids and your kids. We've known this person for 34 years, 33 years. And we're talking and talking and talking. And at the end of the conversation, he says, um, do you mind if I talk to Richard alone? And I said, well, sure. And we shut the speakerphone off. I, I said goodbye. And now I'm, I'm in, in my office. And when he begins to place the world of his suffering on my shoulders and has a list of grievances as they relate to me that go back years and years and years and years and years. Things that I didn't even remember I had said, or could have said, or would have said, or should have said. And it just went on and on and on. And I felt in that moment the weight of the world on my shoulders. Just like, whoa. But for some reason, on this Holy Wednesday, at 5.38, before I got to give a class, for some reason, I didn't react the way I normally would. I didn't contract and react. I heard a call for love and compassion 
I heard suffering, and I knew it was now called Richard causing my suffering, but it wasn't me causing anyone's suffering. You don't suffer because of anybody else. You suffer because of you and yourself and your own thoughts and your own feelings. That's where suffering happens. And I'm also staring at the stuff that I'm going to teach to people. <laughs> <laughs> While I'm listening to the suffering, mm-hmm, compassion is taught by Jesus and Buddha is not about a separate giver and receiver, and I and another. I don't think I really ever said that, but I'll, I am going to look at if, if I said that. If that, I, I don't remember, but... We are taught through our practices to dissolve the abyss between that which gives and that which receives. No, I don't remember ever saying that, but I'm going to look at that, though. Maybe, maybe, maybe I did no me, no you. Only a sea of sentient beings suffering since the beginning of time, looking for a way out. And who do you think the way out is in those moments? Hello? Hello? You've been here? Hello? Who is the way out of this mess? You! You're practicing, right? This is my way out. The cure, the medicine, the bomb lies deep within us in the very nature of who and what we are. Giving and receiving are one in truth. If I take this on and then give it back out, I'm just going to receive it for myself. And that's not a gift a son and daughter of God would want to give to ourselves. For some reason, my compassionate heart was open. For some reason, I didn't react and contract. I just listened, and it was the suffering that we all suffer with. And I also forgot to say this at the other service. I apologized for any pain I might have caused it intentionally and unintentionally from what I might have done or might have said or could have said or should have said that I, I was going to be more aware of my relationship with this person in the future and realizing it's probably true of other people as well because nothing ever shows up by accident to be more conscious of who's in front of you and how they're being affected by what you said. But that moment was so powerful because it was a moment of seeing the whole world of my life unfold before me. In that moment, Christ's consciousness was born on earth. In that moment, Jesus was like a little tiny baby in my heart. It wasn't my big 180-pound friend. It was my little tiny Christ baby child being held in the manger of my heart. And he was calling, she was calling. It was weeping for love and affection not reaction and contraction. And for some reason, I really saw that. And it was just there. Don't you love those days? Those are beautiful, Buddha-filled days. I was just there for my brother. And I heard what he was saying. I heard the call, and I answered it. The truth is, everyone here, no matter what is being presented to you, bless you, is doing the same thing. They're calling for that response from you. And I'm not always awake enough or aware enough to see it, really. My friend was, was so beautiful in helping me see a moment to awaken and asking me, are you willing to help me end this suffering? Because it, now it was not just his suffering. Guess what? It had become my suffering. And I want you to know a part of me wanted to tell him a few things. <laughs> Buddy, you <hello. laughs> I haven't thought about you in a year. What is your problem, dude? <laughs> you know, right? Isn't schism division? And then the phone call would have ended with the usual isn't schism division and made known on earth. And I could have been right. I wouldn't have been happy. What the sweat from my brow and come in and mouth these truths to people on Wednesday night, but not have embodied them. For some reason, it was a holy night. Something else was called for. And I gave to him and was nurtured by it. And it was beautiful. I didn't tell the group the story on Wednesday night because I hadn't yet quite absorbed it. Because it was big. It was a huge energy. 